Before we get to solving PDEs, I thought I'd begin with a little bit of review for ODEs, starting with the series solution method to solving differential equations. Now, if you already know about series solutions, you don't have to watch this video, but I've made it not only because it's going to end up helping other people, but because I might end up referring to parts of it in my PDE video series. So suppose you have a linear second order differential equation, something like the second derivative of y with respect to x plus p of x times dy by dx plus q of x y equals r of x, where p, q, and r are all functions of x. Now remember Taylor series? Well, if a function was continuous and differentiable, you could express it as an infinite series of polynomial terms being added together with the ans as your coefficients. Now, what if we take this and substitute it into our differential equation? Well, first we'll need to find expressions for the first and second derivatives of y, but that's pretty simple. For the first derivative, you just bring the n down and reduce the power by 1. And for the second derivative, you just bring the n minus 1 down and reduce the power by 1 again. If we take these expressions and substitute them into our ODE, here's what we'll have. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 times x minus x naught to the n minus 2 plus p of x times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n n x minus x naught to the n minus 1 plus q of x times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n x minus x naught to the n and all of that equals r of x. Now p of x, q of x, and r of x seem to just be sitting there. But since they're presumably continuous and differentiable functions of x, it's also possible to express them as power series. So we can say that p of x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of bn times x minus x naught to bn. q of x is the same thing, except now the coefficients are cn. And r of x is the same thing, but now the coefficients are d sub n. Putting this all into our ODE, we'll get something like this. Now when we're solving an ODE, P, Q, and R are generally given to us. So it follows that we can easily find the coefficients B, N, C, N, and D, N in their Taylor series expansions. We also know X naught, since that's something we usually set ourselves. So that means the only things that are missing are the coefficients A, N in our series solution. So presumably if we expand everything on the left hand side, we'll end up with a system of N equations involving N unknowns, which are the coefficients A sub N. If we fully solve the system, we'll get to our solution y of x, but there's a caveat. We can only do this if we properly expand p of x, q of x, and r of x about x equals x naught. If we can't do that, if one of the functions is undefined at x naught, then we won't be able to properly expand and simplify the left or the right hand size, and our series solution method wouldn't work. To combat this, we'll have to go back and express our y of x as a power series about some other value of x where p, q, and r are defined. But another thing we can do is use the Frobenius method in, in certain situations, which we'll talk about in a future video. Anyway, let's illustrate this method with a very simple example. Suppose our differential equation is y double prime, which is the second derivative of y, minus 4y equals 0. Using the series solution method, let's make y a power series. The only question is, what point is the power series expansion about? The easiest point we can pick is x0 equals 0, and since negative 4 is just a constant, it's always continuous and differentiable for any value of x, so x0 equals 0 is a valid choice. If we pick x0 equals 0, then our power series solution just becomes y of x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n. The first derivative is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times n times x to the n minus 1, and the second derivative is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2. Here's what we'll get if we substitute this into our ODE. Now we could expand everything and solve for every single coefficient individually, but the expression is simple enough that we can get a more general equation for the coefficients a n by combining these two sums. But the only way we can combine these two sums is to make the power effects the same for both of them. We can't do that, we can't just straight up add them together and take some terms common. So we'd have to change the power n to an n minus 2, or we either change the n minus 2 to an n. I'm going to go ahead and do the former, so I'll change the n to an n minus 2. If we set our index n equal to some dummy index m minus 2, then we can do just that. Notice that when n equals 0, m equals 2. So our summation becomes 
the sum from m equals 2 to infinity of a sub m minus 2 times x to the power m minus 2. And now our differential equation becomes the following. Notice that now I've changed m back to n because it doesn't really matter what name we assign to our index, but there's still a problem with this expression that prevents us from combining the two summations. One of the sums starts at 0, while the other starts at 2. But that problem is pretty easy to overcome. Just expand out the n equals 0 and n equals 1 terms in the first summation, and leave everything else out. These first two terms are just 0, and we're left with the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2 minus 4 times the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of a sub n minus 2 times x to the power n minus 2, and all of that equals 0. Everything's consistent now, so we can combine these two summations to end up with the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 minus 4 a sub n minus 2 times x to the n minus 2, that equals 0. Since the right-hand side is 0, all the coefficients on the left-hand side must be 0, since x isn't always 0. So a n times n times n minus 1 minus 4 times a sub n minus 2 is 0. And this is what we call our recursion relation. It relates the nth term in the sequence of coefficients to terms that occurred previously in that sequence. If we solve for a n, we'll get a n equals 4 times a sub n minus 2 over n times n minus 1. From this formula, it's pretty clear that since the nth coefficient in the sequence is related to the term that's two places back in the sequence, we have two solutions to this differential equation, one for odd n and another for even n. The even coefficients are related to previous even coefficients, and the odd coefficients are related to the previously occurring odd coefficients. So let's break this recursion relation up into two branches, one for even n and another for odd n. For each branch, we'll try to find a more explicit formula for the nth coefficient of the sequence. We'll start with the even branch, and typically the way to find an explicit formula is to start writing out terms and determining the pattern connecting those terms. So here we'd start with a2, which is 4a0 over 2 times 1. Next would be a4, which is 4a2 over 4 times 3. But we already know what a2 is, so if we substitute that in, we get a4 equals 4 times 4 times a0 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now you might begin to notice that a pattern is developing. This 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 in the denominator happens to just be 4 factorial. The numerator we can also write as 2 to the power 4. So notice the pattern. The coefficient a4 in this sequence of even index coefficients is 2 to the 4 a0 over 4 factorial. It follows that the nth term of the sequence is 2 to the n a0 over n factorial. Since n is even here, we can also write it as a sub 2k is 2 to the power 2k times a0 over 2k factorial, where k is greater than or equal to 1. Because any even number can be written as a multiple of 2, so that's why I changed n to 2k here, when n is an even number. Now let's look at the odd branch and do the same thing. For instance, a3 would be 4 times a1 over 3 times 2, and a5 would be 4 times a3 over 5 times 4, but substituting in a3, it would become 4 times 4 times a1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, in terms of just a1. Now recognize the pattern again. The portion in the denominator is just 5 factorial, while the part in the numerator can be written as 2 to the power 4. So if this is how a5 is determined, it follows that a n would be determined by 2 to the n minus 1 times a1 over n factorial, for odd n, of course. Now remember, if any even number can be written as 2 times k, where k is an integer, any odd number can be written as 2 times k plus 1, where k is an integer. And this is what we end up with. a sub 2k plus 1 is 2 to the power 2k times a1 over 2k plus 1 factorial. Now let's go all the way to the solution we substituted in at the beginning, which was the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n. Now we know the formula for all the coefficients a sub n. So we can expand out the summation here in y to get a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared and so on plus a2k times x to the 2k plus a2k plus 1 times x to the 2k plus 1 and so on. Substituting in the values for the higher coefficients gives us a more simple expression for y of x. 
Notice that we can separate the even terms in this expanded out summation from the odd terms, and we'll end up with two series. So the solution to our ODE will become the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the 2k times a0 over 2k factorial times x to the power 2k plus the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the power 2k times a1 over 2k plus 1 whole factorial times x to the 2k plus 1. We can stop here and leave our solution the way it is, which is what we'll have to do for most cases, but in this situation we can go a step further. It turns out that this first summation is just the Taylor expansion of a hyperbolic cosine, or as I like to call it, cosine of 2x. And the second summation is just the Taylor expansion of the hyperbolic sine, or as I like to call it, cinch 2x. So finally, the solution to our ODE in a more simplified form is a0 times cosine of 2x plus a1 times cinch 2x. The unknowns a0 and a1 would typically be found from the initial or boundary conditions, so we're just going to leave them there for now. And that does it for series solutions. In the next video, we're going to be solving a particular type of differential equation by the series solution method, called the Legendre ODE.